What's up guys, Kevin Allen here from DFS Army and it is NFL week one. It's right around the corner. We're taking a look at FanDuel week one main slate. We got some changes to go over on FanDuel. They got a big million dollar contest posted. We're going to do a first look. We're going to go position by position. We're going to understand the FanDuel scoring system. We're going to emphasize FanDuel a little bit more than uh, in the past this season because I'm really excited about the contest that they put out and some changes they've made to the scoring, which I'm going to bring up right now. So a lot of people don't know this, but FanDuel has adjusted their scoring system and added bonuses right? 100 yards rushing, 100 yard game, three point bonus. Where'd that come from? 100 yards receiving, three point bonus. That's new. So 300 yards passing, three point bonus. So FanDuel has added bonuses to their scoring system. What, what else has changed? Nothing. It's still half point PPR. Uh, Yeah, nothing else really changes there, but we have bonuses. Now, why is this relevant? It's relevant on FanDuel because FanDuel had always been very much a touchdown only platform. The only way you're really getting a player with a positive result, they have to score a touchdown. Well, now crossing 100 yards, uh, 100 100 yards receiving or rushing is going to give us that three point bonus. It's not quite a touchdown, but it is a difference maker in the scores because Fandle scoring being lower, the difference between a, a 10 or a 13 is big. And of course, a 13 with a touchdown at 20. So you get the idea. Bonuses are huge. It helps the wide receiver position a little bit. And it really probably changes the way that Fandle is going to play in 2024. So that's awesome. With that being said, let's jump into NFL week one on Fandle. And before I even look at the players, uh, the second change that they've made on Fandle at least for week one, is they're including the Sunday night game in that big million dollar contest and in their main slate contest. So we've already gone over DraftKings, but here on FanDuel, you could see that there's an extra game here, the Rams at the Lions, which is probably one of the, if not the sexiest game on the entire slate to attack. So on FanDuel, we don't have that game on DraftKings. We do. So let's keep this Rams at the Lions game in mind. There are a couple other games that have high totals we want to pay attention to. Jaguars at the Dolphins here with a 49 and a half point total. We've got Houston at the Colts. Colts, also 49 point total. Note the team totals as well here. We've got a high team total for the Bills in this 48 pointer. So just quick little lesson. This is the DFS Army Domination Station Optimizer that you're seeing. These are the game tiles up top here. And when I just want to identify teams with the, the massive team total, the team totals are written right here and they come, they are built off of the sportsbook projection system. So you've got Miami with a 26 and a quarter, Bills 27, Bears at 25. Again, really interesting. No one's paying attention to the Bears this week. You've also got here the Texans at 25 and three quarters. And I'm sure, yeah, there it is. The Lions at 27. So a bunch of high team totals to pay attention to as we go position by position on FanDuel. Before we get started, reminder to hit that like button. Make sure you let us know that you're enjoying the FanDuel content here. A lot of sites only focus on DraftKings and big, big news here at DFS Army. Bobby Wow, AK Bobby Millions, AK Bobby Moneybags, multi-time FanDuel Millie Maker winner, at least once on FanDuel, once on DraftKings, multi-time winner. Bobby Millions will be doing a FanDuel specific tournament cheat sheet for us every week of the 2024 NFL season. That is a huge get. Woohoo. That's fucking awesome. So stick around all season. Make sure you're signed up at DFS Army. If you're not a DFS Army subscriber at the moment, you want access to the tools, the Domination Station Optimizer, the Research Station, everything super mobile friendly. The whole site has been updated. The simulation stack setting, all that great stuff. Promo code NFL15 gets you 15% off any subscription that we carry at DFS Army across the board it is a universal code and it is alive up through Sunday at one o'clock then it will end you will never get that discount again 15% off promo code NFL 15 and that 15% actually locks in for as long as you remain subscribed so get in there get signed up at the army all right let's roll through position by position actually one of the things I really love to do here the domination station is barely updated with super initial projection right but one of the things I always like to do is just simply sort the projections by fantasy points per dollar to see who's popping as a good value play at any particular position group. These are super preliminary, but you can see some of the quarterbacks that are kind of popping as values. There's uh, Richardson, Jaden Daniels, and not, so, not shocking at 7K. Caleb Williams, the cheaper guys, of course, are going to pop. Anthony Richardson here at 8,300 as well. Uh, we'll go position by position here on the Dom Station. Top value at running back is uh, James Conner, and I kind of agree with that. I really like him at 6,100 here. Jerome Ford, 6,200, getting all the touches for the Browns in a tough matchup. Uh, here you got Kamara and Devon Achan, Travis Etienne, and some other of the big names. A wide receiver at the top of the list. Chris Godwin, because he's just inexpensive here at 5,600. Malik Neighbors. Marvin Harrison Jr., 6,600. Good price. Drake London, really excited about him uh, as well this week and this season. So you see some of the names popping. Ooh, there's uh, Cooper Cup in that big game. I like that as well. So let's pay attention to him. And of course, the tight end position. It looks like Dalton Kincaid, Trey McBride, Kylie Pitter. All the good names here are popping as pretty good plays in week one, just according to the 
early goofy projections. It is Saturday, August 31st as I'm recording this. So most of uh, the DFS Army stuff, the ownership projections, those things will start to populate on Monday and Tuesday. And of course, we've got big showdown single game contest coming up in week one as well. We got a ton of them. So lots and lots of content coming out here on the DFS Army YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell too if you want to be notified whenever we drop these videos. Be the first one in. Drop a comment. All right, let's go through it here. We're going to start with the quarterback position. We're going to go player by player. Talk a little bit about each one. And we're going to pick out ones that we might like to target for NFL week one. So at the very, very top of the salary range here, we've got Josh Allen, 9,200. Listen, it's a great game. They have the highest team total on the entire slate. And I'm sure Josh Allen's going to have a great game. We're going to afford 9,200. Great. So love Josh Allen. And the best part about Allen here is stacking him is super cheap, fun, and easy, right? All the players attached to Josh Allen this season are going to be inexpensive. So I'm not even worried about the 9,200 because you pair him up with Keon Coleman or Curtis Samuel or Kay Shaq, Dalton Kincaid. They're all inexpensive relative to their position group. Perfectly playable. CJ Stroud, same deal. You know, now that FanDuel's offering that 300 yard bonus prop, you know, CJ Stroud is sitting on a 272 yard, just yardage prop for this game on the over under. If he just goes over by a little bit, you're getting the bonus three. That really helps. He's 8,500. I don't mind that. Joe Burrow, not a competitive situation really with New England. They're massive favorites, but the team total is decent. Anthony Richardson gets it done with his legs, but you know, FanDuel appropriately priced Anthony Richardson up quite a bit for this matchup. So I like him. I'm down with a rich, no worries there. Probably not a guy who's going to throw for the 300 we need for the bonus, but he's going to run enough to make up for it. Kyler Murray in that game against Buffalo. That's going to be a high scoring game. Will Kyler Murray get it done? He could certainly also kind of a fun stack with Marvin Harrison Jr. is underpriced, but keeping in mind, I do like to stick with favored quarterback. That is one of the Burns Millie maker sort of notes that we've learned over the years that we've done the research and you really want to be, you really want the quarterback from the team that win. That's why I don't know, but that shows up in Millie maker winners almost all the time. So we want winning quarterbacks. I don't think that's what we're going to get here from Kyler Murray. Dak Prescott. Yeah, sure. Playable at 7,800. No problem there. Cleveland, not a great matchup, not a high team total, but he's Dak and they don't have a running back. So probably going to throw for a bunch of touchdowns there. Tua, one of the highest totals on the slate. I like the spot at 7,700 for Tua. I have no problem going there. He's not going to run for a touchdown. Doesn't do a whole lot of that. And there is certainly some risk that all of those running backs, those stud running backs will take up a lot of the touchdown scoring. But Tua was a beast last year. And, you know, he doesn't score a ton. He doesn't run a ton. But at this price, he's priced down enough that I think it's a viable spot to consider. Here we go. Jared Goff down at 7,500. Also really interesting in the nightcap. Detroit is favored. You know, Goff has more weapons than ever this year. Jamison Williams on the outside as well. I like pairing quarterbacks in stacks, not with just with like Amon Ra, their top guy, or Laporta, but also like a Jamison Williams, one of the secondary guys on the team. Because if Jamison Williams is going off and Amon Ra or Kincaid are going off, then you got a double stack with Goff in a game where that's super viable. Of course, Goff also is contending with very elite running backs that could take up the scoring as well, but it's a great spot for Goff here. And I don't mind it at 7,500. Stafford at seven at 7,300, also acceptable. I'm intrigued by Caleb Williams down here. I'm just intrigued by it at 7,100. Caleb Williams, the rookie, you know, not really super trustworthy, but Williams and Derek Carr, uh, not Derek Carr, Jaden Daniels. Uh, definitely not Derek Carr, but Jaden Daniels at 7K. Daniels gets it done with his legs. You know, he can run a little bit. He could throw a little bit. I made Jaden Daniels my quarterback in the DraftKings first look just, you know, and I have a Richardson one as well, but he's very much viable here and he does pop as the top value at the position right now. If we need to pay down, I don't mind going there. Some super cheap options here. Daniel Jones at 6,800. Yeah, I know. It seems crazy, but Daniel Jones is playable every week. He runs the football as well. I know he sucks. You don't have to put it in the comments. Actually, do put it in the comments. Hey, Kevin, he sucks. What do you do? I know he sucks, but he's also put up 30s multiple times. He's won people, Millie Makers, including the Bobby Wow Millie Maker win. That was with Daniel Jones. Crazy, right? So he can get it done. And in a contest like this, I don't mind it. As a matter of fact, fuck it. Go in there. Daniel Jones, let's plug him in. We're attacking the Millie Maker here. You got to get silly to win the Millie. You're not going to win it by doing what everybody else is doing. With that being said, Sam Darnold also playable against the terrible Giants defense. Like this is crazy. I feel like I'm in bizarro land, but I would say Sam Darnold is a playable guy in week one as well. Bo Nix, eh, that's about it for me here. I don't think any of these other quarterbacks are going to be viable. I'm not playing Nix. I'm probably not playing Brissett. Deshaun Watson got a tough matchup, although he can get, you know, tough man. I don't, I don't trust at all. All right, moving on to the running back position. FanDuel running backs are king, even with the new bonus scoring. We just hope we get our plus threes from our running backs. We want to try to get guys who will get us hundred yards and a touchdown because the half point PPR FanDuel scoring just favors running backs, especially in the flex. And one of the things that I like to do because FanDuel is so touchdown dependent, if we can find lower cost running backs that have the same touchdown odds as let's say some of the higher price guys, that's the way to go on FanDuel. Give me that touchdown up for 6K. Probably get hundred yards too, hopefully, right? Those kind of guys, we get hundred yards of touchdown, get our 20 points, 6, 12, 18, 24. So on FanDuel, we want a 3X salary. And what that allows us to do is pay up at wide receiver where we want 
wide receivers are less likely generally to score touchdowns. But if, if we are able to afford stud wide receivers on a site like FanDuel in tournaments, we're more likely to get those touchdowns, the Tyreek Hills, the Mike Evans, the touchdown scoring wide receivers. So with all of that being said, let's start at the top. We'll work our way down the running back position here. Bijan, sure, spectacular. Nothing wrong with that. He's priced up. Jonathan Taylor as well. Yes, I love it. Jameer Gibbs, the hamstring should play in week one. He'll be fine as well. You know, he's sharing touchdowns with Montgomery. Uh, it's probably somebody I'm not going to pay all the way up for, like at a site like FanDuel that doesn't reward passing receptions as much. Here's Kyron Williams at 7,800. And you know what? This is going to be my first button click. Listen, people are sketchy. They're not sure about Kyron in week one. What's going to happen with Blake Corum and all these other things? And oh my goodness, they're giving uh, Kyron Williams pass uh, punt return duties. They must hate him. I don't believe in any of that. This guy was a stud last year. He was pay priced up like crazy. He's in the game of the week in probably the best game that we want to target, the Sunday night game about it. Now, pro tip, if we're actually going to play players from the Sunday night game, make sure to put them in the flex because if you're in win position, you can kind of make some adjustments. It gives you a little more flexibility late. So always remember to put the player in the latest possible game in the flex on both FanDuel and DraftKings. A little pro tip right there. All right, let's continue on. Rashad White, yeah, you know, good matchup. 7,700, a little pricey for a guy that really didn't score a ton of touchdowns last year. Uh, average uh, almost 14 fantasy points per game. Not that great. Again, note that Kyron Williams, 19 points per game. He was such a beast. These averages from last season should carry forward. There's nothing different about the role. So these are relevant numbers for a lot of these guys. James Cook, very much in play as well. Um, you know, he's up and down. I'm going to I'm gonna find us cheaper running backs for this lineup. But, you know, all of these guys are totally fine. Uh, ETN kind of on the losing side of this game, most likely. I've already bet Miami to win. So I usually want players from the winning side, which will negate ETN a little bit for me. Kenny Walker, sure. We all remember early season last year, Denver got run over by Miami to the tune of 70 points. They, maybe they're a slow starting team. I don't know. It's week one. Maybe that defense starts slow. Maybe not. I don't know. But Kenny Walker's fine. He's a touchdown guy as well. And he's perfect for the FanDuel format. I usually don't play him on DraftKings though. Here we go. Joe Mixon on Houston this season. You know, sure. Why not? Devon Achan at 7,200. Going to have to score probably, uh, you know, a couple touchdowns, but he can get there. A lot of other guys. Uh, Dave Montgomery doesn't get a ton of touches anymore. Probably going to go more to Jameer Gibbs, but he will get the goal line work. And it's not out of the question for him to put in two touchdowns in a game like this and, you know, and break the slate. So certainly within the realm of stuff that could happen as well. I don't love Zach Moss as much or Aaron Jones is kind of, uh, I'm not so sure about him, but 6,800 price is okay. Raheem Mostert, 6,600, a touchdown guy. Playable. I don't mind it. There's Swift. We don't really know what his role is going to look like on Chicago. I do like Zamir White here at 6,400. It's a bargain. He's getting the full workload for the, uh, at least we think so. I mean, I guess they have some other guys there, but we think Zamir White should get the full workload for the Raiders. So this is a game where I do think the Chargers will win. I think the Raiders will lose. So I'm a little less excited about it, but Zamir White is playable for sure. Uh, Jerome Ford also in play as well at running back, going to get all the work for Cleveland while they wait for Chubb to come back. Don't hold your breath, right? It's going to be a while. Um, let's see if there's any other really cheap spots. Yes. Here's one that I really like. And yes, this does break a rule for me of favoring running backs on favored teams. Arizona is an underdog in this game, but Connor was so good with Tyler Murray last season when they were together. It's hard to ignore it. And he's in play for me. I'm going to plug him in that RB2 spot here and just give it a shot. I like the price point. He really represents a value, but uh, I don't think he'll be high owned. Later in the week here on DFS Army, we'll be talking uh, ownerships and all that stuff on the Tournament Tactics show. So make sure to tune in for Tournament Tactics every Friday at 5 p.m. where we have ownership projections in there and we can really get deep into the strategy of DFS. This is just our early first look. And I usually like to favor value guys early. And then later on, we'll get dive a little bit deeper into strategy or fading chalk and that kind of thing or low own. Gus Edwards, though, is another guy. Touchdown score. Uh, Chargers are supposed to be a run focused offense this year. And for by every stretch, it looks like Gus Edwards is getting all of the work for these guys. So I'm going to plug him into the flex as a touchdown score. Nothing wrong with that. I want to point out a couple other names that might be of interest here. Sure, Brian Robinson Jr., kind of interesting. I'm not really going to go there with Zeke Elliott, but Chuba Hubbard is getting the start for Carolina and he'll get all the work. And sure, why not at 5,600? That if we need salary, I'm definitely going to play some Chuba Hubbard on FanDuel as well, just because, you know, YOLO, why not? You can get a starting running back for these prices. Let's do it and let's see how the lineup comes together. So just in the interest of understanding how much salary we do have left to mess around with here, I'm going to go to defense next. And one of my philosophies on defense, certainly on DraftKings, has always been just find the cheapest viable one. Now in NFL week one, we don't really know what's going to happen. I think a lot of the offenses are going to be out of sync. Some of them will be in sync. Some of them will be out of sync. We don't know which ones who practiced a lot. We see it every year. NFL week one is kind of weird. So all we really have to go by are who are these younger quarterbacks that could make mistakes. So we'll look for situations like that with low total teams facing hopefully less experienced opponents. So Cardinals, 
no patriots no panthers no rams definitely not you know commanders no right so let's see falcons no jaguars no titans this could be interesting at chicago but uh, you know rookie quarterback but he's looked really composed so i'm gonna give it a no as well uh raiders no texans this is a strong maybe okay they're going up against a very very turnover prone anthony richardson he continued to do turnover like he, this guy's a turnover machine he is awesome and i don't mind even playing him as our quarterback i love it but he's going to turn the ball over he's fumbling he's throwing interceptions that's just who he is so you know texans definitely in play week one Detroit, no chargers probably not chicago yes so here's another one i mean you know will levis on tennessee has not shown me anything to say he's good so i don't mind playing the bears i don't mind playing them at all um let's see what else we can do at a low price point here cowboys acceptable always although better at home 4500 is a little spendy for them let's see saints so they like the vikings the most and i get that too going up against daniel jones but we're not going to use him in this lineup because we got daniel jones in there but everybody knows daniel jones also stinks so vikings will be in play as well but let's scroll down to our cheapest viable defense which i believe is the houston texans with a nod to who is the other team that i said here the bears with a nod to the bears but we're gonna go with the texans taking on and a turnover prone opponent in anthony richardson all right taking a look at the wide receiver position on fanduel nfl week one let's go at the very top we've got tyreek hill reek he's awesome we can afford him we want to use him guy averaged 19.5 fantasy points per game cd lamb similar 19.5 fantasy points per game either one of these guys is a spectacular start they are touchdown scorers and i favor them maybe you know some of these other names that are also up here but in the end of the day ownership will dictate a lot of this so if we want to plug in i'm going to try to plug in tyreek hill and see if we can afford it here in this lineup we'll see how much salary we have left Got about five okay what does this say here um we'll see so tyreek hill is very expensive and tough to afford we'll see if we can actually plug him in but of course cd lamb great play not the best you know matchup or anything but just he's going to beast all year long you never have to worry about him jamar chase can get it done even in a nondescript start like this justin jefferson i really like jefferson in a comeback against the uh, daniel jones start to this lineup that i've got going on again this is a millie maker type lineup so anything goes here silly for the millie but yeah i don't mind uh justin jefferson a little ping pong action on that giants game if you want to go there amin ra tied into the best sexiest game of the entire slate i like him puka 8400 again i love the game environment but you're gonna see here that we can get cooper cup for 7k i certainly prefer just saving the money uh, don't worry about this q tag he will be fine um, yeah mike evans there at 7900 totally acceptable Devonte adams 7500 that's starting to be a really good deal for a guy like him so i like Devonte as well week one sorry i like geek you like everybody yeah you know all playable these are tournament plays cooper cup though i really like cooper cup here at 7k cooper cup's a beast he's no different than puka you're getting a discount he's part of this amazing game i also don't mind this idea of ping-ponging him and amin ra as sort of a way to get a little different in week one although i'm so convinced that tyree kill is going to bounce that it's hard a beast that it's hard to do anything without him so we'll see what we end up with here but because we spent down at running back and at quarterback we have the luxury of really having multiple stud wide receivers in our lineup so this is a really flexible approach and you'll see as we i'm going to point out some supreme value plays at all these positions but especially the wide receiver position where we can be really flexible with how we make the rest I'm, maybe we'll even be upgrading this last spot by the time we're done one chris olave meh metcalf meh calf no yes meh yeah, that's how i feel about it just eh. um what i like about metcalf on FanDuel is you know he's a touchdown guy but beyond that meh to calf dj moore here yeah if i'm playing caleb i'll probably play him with dj moore Diggs, you know i'd probably rather play nico collins here i don't really know how houston is going to support all three of those wide receivers so we'll see drake london is very exciting week one at 6700 uh, he's somebody i'm going to have in a ton of lineups you know he's somebody i really want to target another guy i really want to target heavily in week one is marvin harrison jr at 6600 he's priced up there with the studs on FanDuel on DraftKings. i need an editor to edit those things out but he's priced up there on DraftKings with the stud zone but here on FanDuel, he's priced down sort of in the mid range. Okay. I like it. Pittman, a good pairing with Anthony Richardson. Pickens, straight up good play. Touchdown score. I'm down with him. But of course, with Daniel Jones, we are going to be pairing him with Malik Neighbors. How can you not? If Jones is getting it done, he's got to get it done with somebody. And Neighbors is the shiny new toy over there. But I continue. There are values all throughout the wide receiver position in NFL week one. So I need to talk about as many as I can. Terry McLaurin, no real touch competition in Washington right now. They're trying to get 
get, I believe, Noah Brown up to speed. So he's there on that team, I think. They got rid of Jahan Dodson. They got rid of him. And they're talking about Diami Brown or Luke McCaffrey or Alameda. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's going to be Terry McLaurin as the prime guy. So he should get a lot of targets. We'll see if he can get a touchdown. I'm going to only be pairing him with Jaden Daniels. But if this was a Jaden McDaniels lineup, which would be fine, McLaurin is probably who I'm pairing him up with. Calvin Ridley, deep ball guy. Don't like that. Gabe Davis, meh. Christian Kirk is meh for me also. Keon Coleman could get it done. Probably more somebody I want to pair up with Josh Allen than a standalone play. Jamison Williams. I like Jamison as a secondary piece, especially on a lineup helmed by Jared Goff or built around this Rams Detroit game. We could build a crazy Rams Detroit stack as well. I think we'll do it just in on the Players Club later in the week as we build lineups together to attack these contests. But I do love the idea of game stacking the shit out of this late game and just you're buried in the tournament. Like, where am I? Oh, I'm in 57,000th place out of a million entries. And then, all, oh yeah, wait a second though. I loaded up on players from the last game and then all of a sudden you're like a hero. Comes marching in late. Boom. Game's going nuts. Back, forth, back, forth. Detroit, Rams, Puka, Cubs, touchdown. Kyra Williams, touchdown. Jameer Gibbs, touchdown. I'm in raw. And you got all the players. And take down a tournament late night. Jameson Williams, two touchdowns. In we'll hold off on that. But continuing down, I took us through a journey just there. I lived it a little bit here. I hope you guys live that with me. The feeling. Climbing the leaderboards in a big contest on Sunday night. You're watching the game. Drinking blue moons. I wish that feeling upon all of you this season. Let's fucking do it. All right, where was I? Chris Godwin popping as a big value play at 5,600. Let's not forget about him. Deontay Johnson, probably going to be a target hog for Carolina. Is he, uh, is his quarterback a turd? Yes, but he'll be a target hog. So that's kind of cool. Cortland Sutton, 5,500. Yeah. Do I like to play Cortland Sutton? No, but Bo Nix, who's he throwing to? He's throwing to Cortland Sutton. Let's not ignore him. Yeah. He sucked with uh, Russell Wilson. You know who else sucks? Russell Wilson. Maybe Cortland Sutton's good. I don't know, but I like guys who score touchdowns on FanDuel. Continuing on, K Shack. Do we know that K Shack isn't the number one wide receiver for Buffalo? I don't know that. You don't know that. Nobody knows it. Maybe Khalil Shakir is going to be the man over there. Got to get some exposure to K-Shack. Yeah, Shahid is a touchdown guy. Curtis Samuel gets a touchdown every once in a while. So all those are relevant names here. Josh Palmer at 5K. I mean, there are so many salary savers here. We don't even need to go here. We could probably upgrade one of these spots and just downgrade one of these wide receiver spots. No worry. And, and get more studliness going at our running back. Or if we had a more studly quarterback wide receiver combo to start off this lineup, then instead of like a Malik, we go all the way down to Palmer, who absolutely can score a touchdown and has a good chance of doing so. So a ton of value here on FanDuel in NFL week one. Anybody sub 5k of interest? The only one that I've identified that I'm really going to come kind of interested in is Jalen Polk. Going to be the WR1 for New England. I actually think he's going to surprise a lot of people this season. Or he might. I don't actually, I don't know. He might not be the WR1. It could be KJ Oz. But one of these New England turds could get it done for New England down here in the zone. So we've got players all throughout the salary spectrum. Let's finish out this lineup here and talk about the tight end position. And guys, I'm sorry. I love this game. I want to target it, but it's very difficult to justify Sam Laporta for 8K. It just is tough to justify it. He averaged 11.5 fantasy points per game, had, quote, the season of a lifetime last year. You know who else did that? Evan Ingram for 6,200. You know what Detroit has more of this year? More weapons to choose from. He'll have pop games, but there's no way I want to pay up or Sam Laporta where I'm going to put a 6K running back in the line rather than pay up at running back and then just pay down at tight end. So that is not happening. Dalton Kincaid, yeah, cool. Like the game, like the environment. But you know what else is cool? Trey McBride, Evan Ingram, any one of these guys. So I'm going to look to pay down. We're going to plug in Trey McBride in this lineup here and just call it a lineup. Um, but to continue on kind of looking through the tight end position, yeah, Kyle Pitts, sure. Uh, he's a little expensive for his lack of sort of resume right now, but we love Kirk Cousin. He's a good quarterback. Why not? Kyle Pitts could go crazy this year. Evan Ingram has been one of the most voluminous tight ends in the league the last few years. He's part of an exciting game. Uh, Miami can't stop the tight end. They have good cornerback play in Miami. They can't really stop the tight end. So Evan Ingram, very interesting week one. Jake Ferguson as well. And Joku, sure, why not? Taysom Hill, love Tay-Tay, but probably not. That's probably it. Uh, there's no reason to kind of dive this deep on FanDuel. No reason to look to go any beyond any of this group. So I'll be sticking here, but we're going to go with Trey McBride. And final lineup, Millie Maker Special, Daniel Jones. What? Are you crazy? This guy could get it too. I know it, but he could also get a 30. Giants, I think, are favored, or at least it's a pick em game. So let's see. Are they fair? As a pair? I believe it's, a, I believe they either plus one or minus one. I think they're plus one at this point in this game. Yeah, they're plus one. Is it something I'm going to put in my cash lineup? No, but a little bit of a fun first look on FanDuel. Daniel Jones, Kyron Williams, James Conner, Tyreek, Cooper Cup, Malik Neighbors, Trey McBride, Gus Edwards, shocker, Gus Edwards, Gus Bus, Houston Texans defense. That's your first look lineup for NFL week one. Remember, we got Bobby Wow doing an exclusive cheat sheet every single week for FanDuel as well as his showdown breakdowns, which if you guys have been watching this channel, you know, he crushes the picks. So I'm excited to see that. We'll have a lot of 
different ideas as the week rolls on. DFS Army tools are live. Here's your uh, domination station. You could start messing around with it. Of course, we've got the basic training page where you learn how to use the domination station and how to use all the stacking system to create correlated lineups that look like tournament winning lineups from the past. Of course, we got our research station, the Proptimizer, uh, the matchups tool, all that great stuff coming out. NFL 15 is the promo code to get 15% off. I'll see you guys later. Let us know who you like as your quarterback wide receiver stack for NFL week one on FanDuel.